Around 10 a.m., Don Juan told Carlos they were going on a trip to a very special place in search of power. They leisurely drove 400 miles north on deserted roads until reaching their destination well into the dark. While Carlos's eyes were trying to adjust to the pitch black, he asked where they were going. Don Juan said they were going to hike in total darkness to a special place to find out for sure whether or not he was capable of continuing to hunt power. He told Carlos what they were doing was not a test, that they were waiting for an omen, and if it didn't come, the conclusion would be that he had not succeeded in hunting power, in which case he would be free from any further imposition, free to be as stupid as he wanted. Don Juan said no matter what happened, he was his friend and would always talk to him. Don Juan dramatically whispered that this was going to be a walk for power, so everything counts. Carlos was to walk in Don Juan's footsteps to perfection to gain power that he was dissipating and not be concerned with anything else except stepping in his tracks. After starting off at a very relaxed pace, with Carlos matching his steps perfectly, he got distracted, glancing to the side, and bumped into a stationary Don Juan. Don Juan said laughing in a low but firm voice that he didn't intend to get hurt by his stupidity and lack of concentration that if he stepped on him again, he would have to go barefoot. Carlos said, I can't walk without shoes. Don Juan doubled up with laughter, and they had to wait for him to stop. He assured Carlos again that they were on a journey to tap power, and things had to be perfect. He whispered that, This desert is oozing with power, and there is no time to be timid. Carlos had never done anything that demanded so much concentration. Don Juan's pace was so fast, and the tension of him watching his every step mounted to such heights that at a given moment, Carlos could no longer feel that he was walking anymore. He couldn't feel his feet or legs, like walking on air with some force carrying him on and on. His concentration had been so total that he didn't even notice the gradual change in light. He became aware that he could see Don Juan's tracks instead of half guessing as he did most of the night. Don Juan suddenly jumped to the side and momentum carried Carlos 20 yards farther. As he slowed down, his legs became weak and shook until he finally collapsed. Don Juan spun him around to lie with his head toward the east to help him regain his strength. Eventually, Carlos had enough energy to stand up and look around. He started to walk, but Don Juan ordered him to stay on the place he had fallen until the sun had come out from behind some black mountain peaks a short distance away. Don Juan pointed to a heavy bank of clouds over the horizon. He said that it would be a proper omen if the wind blew the clouds away in time for the first rays of the sun to hit his body on that hilltop. Don Juan had him stand with his right leg in front, as if he were walking, and told him to look at the horizon without focusing. Carlos's legs became too sore to support him in that agonizing position. He started to shiver uncontrollably and was about to collapse when Don Juan called the whole thing off and helped him to sit down. The bank of clouds had not moved, and they had not seen the rising sun. Don Juan's comment was, too bad. Carlos didn't want to know what the real implications of his failure were, but knowing Don Juan, he was sure he had to follow the dictum of his omens, and there had been no omen that morning. Most of the pain in Carlos's legs had vanished, and he felt a wave of well-being. Don Juan told him to run up a nearby hill to gather some leaves from a specific bush and rub his legs to alleviate all the muscular pain. From where Carlos stood, he could very plainly see a large, lush green bush. He had used the moist leaves of that type of bush before. When he hiked up to the spot, the bush was not there. He was sure he was on the right spot, but looking around, there was nothing even vaguely resembling that particular plant. He walked down and explained to Don Juan his mistake. Don Juan wanted to know why I called it a mistake. Carlos said obviously the bush was not there. Don Juan said he had seen it and said that he saw no mistake and that the plant was there on that hilltop. Don Juan had Carlos survey all around the mountain to go out of his way to prove that there were no plants like that around there. Don Juan said it was a very strange omen and he could not hide his delight. He had a beaming grin and patted Carlos on the head. He urged him to use the technique of looking without focusing in order to find a suitable spot to sleep on that hilltop where he had seen the bush. Carlos selected one, and Don Juan picked debris from the spot and made a circle the size of Carlos. 
Don Juan very gently pulled fresh branches from the bushes and swept the area without really touching the ground. He then removed all the rocks and meticulously sorted them by size into two piles of equal number. Carlos questioned the rocks, and Don Juan replied they were not rocks, but strings to hold his spot together. Don Juan evenly marked the circumference of the circle with 18 smaller ones. He then told Carlos to run down to the bottom of the hill and wait. He pointed to the larger rocks and said that he was going to toss those strings down to him and to place them in the same manner as he did the others. Don Juan told him to fix his gaze on the spots where he throws the strings and not get distracted, or the string will become an ordinary rock and he won't be able to tell the difference between the other rocks lying around. To pick out a specific rock that came hurtling down while displacing other rocks was a maddening affair. When he finally finished and walked back up the hill, he thought he was about to drop dead. Don Juan matted the circle with branches and gave Carlos some leaves to put in his pants against his umbilical region to keep warm without the need of a blanket. Carlos tumbled down inside the circle and fell asleep instantly. It was late afternoon when Carlos woke up. Toward the east, the clouds were thinning and the sun shone from time to time. Carlos felt invigorated and happy. He was not cold. He sat up and realized that Don Juan was nowhere in sight. He had a sudden attack of fear. He lay down again and strangely, his apprehension vanished. He then experienced a quietness and an exquisite sense of well-being. A soft wind swept over his body without making him cold like a gentle wave of warm water that bathed him. Carlos had a strange state of being that had no parallel in his busy and dislocated life. He began to weep, not out of sadness or self-pity, but from inexplicable joy. He wanted to stay in that spot forever, but Don Juan came along and led him on a calm walk around the hilltop. Don Juan made him observe the scenery all around them. They climbed to the highest point and gazed at the endless expanse of majestic land toward the south. Don Juan told Carlos to fix all of it in his memory and that that spot was his. He revealed that Carlos had saw that morning and that was the omen. He told him that he found this spot by seeing and that the omen was unexpected but it happened. He went on to tell him that he was going to hunt power whether he liked it or not and that it's not a human decision but power. Carlos wanted to know what he could do with the hill. Don Juan advised him to fix every feature of it in his memory because this is where he would come in dreaming. He told him it's a place where he would meet with powers and secrets would be revealed to him. He let him know that it won't make sense to him at the moment, so let it be a piece of nonsense for the time being. Knowledge is power, he told him. It takes a long time to harness enough power to even talk about it. Don Juan suggested to Carlos that while dreaming, he should focus his attention on that power bush. If he observed it until it had a place in his memory, he could come back there while dreaming simply by recalling it. He let him know that he could focus his attention on anything, anywhere, but at that time, he was to focus his attention on everything that existed on that hilltop, because that was the most important place in his life. Don Juan encouraged Carlos by telling him he would come with him over and over to that hilltop until he had enough personal power to come by himself and saturate himself with power. In a soft voice, he told Carlos that the hilltop was the place where he would die, that this was the place of his last dance. Carlos nervously asked the meaning of last dance. This is the site of your last stand. You will die here no matter where you are. Every warrior has a place to die, a place soaked with unforgettable memories and events that left their mark a place of marvels where secrets have been revealed, a place of stored personal power. He remarked that a warrior goes back to his or her power spot to store the powers collected over time, either by walking or by dreaming. One day when a warrior's time is up on earth, death will tap on the left shoulder. The warrior's spirit, which is always ready, flies to the power spot and there the warrior dances to death. Don Juan revealed to Carlos that every warrior has a specific dance of power which was developed throughout his or her lifetime, and that every movement is obtained during a struggle of power. A warrior cannot change the designs of death, but with an impeccable spirit, warriors store enough power, after stupendous hardships, to hold death for a moment, a moment to rejoice for the last time. 